Frida Kahlo was one of the most influential painters of the 20th century. Using vibrant colors and symbolism, her art created a striking portrait of womanhood in all its complexity and beauty. Frida's life was full of extremes, from professional success to personal suffering. She remains an icon of feminine strength and achievement and continues to inspire artists from around the globe. Born on July 6, 1907 in Mexico City, Frida was the daughter of a German jewelry store clerk and his wife. Frida would later change the date of her birth to 1910, the year of the Mexican Revolution, a reflection of her constant desire to forge her own identity. Her father, Guillermo, encouraged her budding curiosity, exposing her to Mexican culture from a very early age. She later wrote in her diary, My childhood was marvelous, because although my father was a sick man, he was an immense example to me of tenderness, of work, and above all, of understanding for all my problems. Frida attended the National Preparatory School at the age of 15, one of only 35 other girls in attendance at the time. She participated in various extracurricular activities, including groups studying Mexican culture and oratory. The defining tragedy in Frida's life came in the form of a violent bus accident in 1925. The crash resulted in a broken spinal column, collarbone, ribs, contusions in her right leg and foot, a dislocated shoulder, and a broken pelvis and pierced uterus from an iron handrail which impaled her abdomen. She later said of the crash, I lost my virginity. Frida turned to painting as a form of expression during the long months of recovery. Many of her self-portraits examine the pain she endured throughout her life due to the crash. For example, in The Broken Column, Kahlo portrays her injuries in a highly graphic way. Her upper body is exposed with a large gash from her neck to the sheet covering her lower half. Her spinal cord is visible, cracked and crumbling away. In Hayden Herrera's 1983 biography, she describes the reaction to the painting. To some observers, the column is analogous to a phallus. The painting alludes to the link in Frida's mind between sex and pain, and it recalls the steel rod that pierced her vagina during the accident. The intimacy of the painting is characteristic of her works, exposing the biological and psychological to the glaring examination of the world. Kahlo's works often centered on her marriage to the famed muralist and political activist Diego Rivera. For more than three decades, Kahlo developed as an artist in her own right, so called by American newspapers during her gallery showings in New York. And yet her bond with Rivera perpetually colored the reception of her and her work. This coupled with Kahlo's frank Interpretations of sexuality and politics in her art and in life provided a constant tension between her and the Catholicized atmosphere in which she lived. Her and her husband's emphasis on rejecting European ideals of high art and opting for indigenous forms and techniques in their work and personal appearance contributed to their status as influential and often controversial figures on the world stage. An integration of traditional Mexican aesthetics and radical gender and sexual ideals reveals itself in Kahlo's use of symbolism in her art. For example, in Mexican tradition, the monkey is a symbol of lust. Rather than portraying them as demonic or lascivious to convey this symbol, Kahlo depicts monkeys as affectionate, guardian-like figures. This repurposing of erotic symbols in celebratory terms is a common motif of her work, reclaiming her own sexuality from the gendered society in which she lived. Throughout their life together, Diego Rivera would serve as a leading subject in Kahlo's art. Notably, the International Honor Quilt Panel, denoting her status as a feminist icon, recreates her 1939 piece Las Dos Fridas. In it, two Fridas are portrayed, one holding a locket with a picture of Rivera inside and the other without this locket severing the other's lifeline. The choice of Patricia Velasquez, the contributor of the panel, to include an interpretation of this painting reflects the complicated relationship feminism has had with the institution of marriage. Women's purpose during Frida's time was often seen as residing in this institution, and Mexican Catholic culture in particular emphasized a highly demarcated marital ideal. While the legitimacy of this ideal is constantly in question in feminist discourse, artists like Kahlo never shied away from her emotional dependence on her husband. In recent years, Frida Kahlo has become a major icon in feminist circles. Judy Chicago, architect of the dinner party, stated in a 2010 interview, I think there have been successive ways of interest, 
The first were among women. Her story appealed to women, her images appealed to women. In the second wave, in the Chicano and Hispanic movements, her interest in valorization of Mexican culture appealed to people who were claiming their heritage, just like women were claiming our heritage. Then the third wave was among gays and lesbians because of her shifting gender roles and open sexuality. Frida Kahlo's political, feminist, and artistic footprint is overwhelming. From radical Marxism to bisexual liaisons, from Mexican cultural nationalism to disputes with the Soviet Union, she seemed to never lead a dull moment. On July 13, 1954, her life ended where it began, in her blue house in Mexico City. One of the final entries in her diary reads, I hope the exit is joyful, and I hope never to return. Kahlo always insisted that she never painted her dreams, only her reality. In that realism, her art showed vulnerability, strength, and a unique, unwavering dedication to her female and Mexican identity.